All right, three up to the hour. Why don't I go ahead and get started? We have a really low attendance today, only 11 people. That's kind of odd for us. Anyway, moving forward. Um, let's see, nothing exciting on the AIs. Actually, maybe I should ask the question. So Clemens, you have two AIs out there. Do you plan on working on those in the near future? Uh, um, well, the first one we can, That's that's a very old one. You could probably strike that. Okay, I can do that. Um, this extension can you click what that means. <laughs> do, 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 do. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Oh, the uh, that, yeah, stuff, we yeah. can strike that too. You sure? Okay. I don't mind doing that. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, community time. Um, anything, any topics from the community that are not on the agenda that people would like to bring up? All right, moving forward then. SDK working group. Um, I'm trying to remember what we talked about last week, if it's anything worth mentioning. Scott or Cummins or Fabio or anybody was on the call, anything worth mentioning there? I can't remember. It's kind of business as usual, I'm trying to look for people I have a survey out. I'm still collecting feedback. I've I've uh, had several responses, and not a lot of people are using the SDKs, which is interesting. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that, but yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything you want to anything else worth mentioning or asking of the group other than to look at your survey? Uh, that's in um, so I've been working on the conformance test it, the, the idea is that uh, I'm, I'm making a very very lightweight HTTP uh, sender like basically the goal is it's gonna be a tool that you can point at a, a active HTTP server and give it YAML files that are kind of like the conical form of a cloud event and it'll turn it into an HTTP post and the, the goal is that it will you'll send it back to some sort of active endpoint on the conformance test and you can compare that loopback is working so that's okay. work, that's work happening in the uh, conformance test and I have a PR open right now okay cool any questions for the SDK group okay Moving forward, um, I did ask to get on the TOC schedule so we could put, so we could show, or I'm sorry, so we could ask to go to, to incubator status. And um, Chris Anacek put us on for the September 17th TOC call. Um, still looking for more end users. I know there are a couple of uh, people are still investigating that. So please give me that list when you get a chance. Um, I have not added our charts yet to the agenda doc, um, but the Charts are still linked in this link right here. Um, if you have any ch proposed changes, please let me know. Otherwise, we're gonna go with pretty much what's in there. And then moving forward, KubeCon San Diego, I did put in a proposal for two 90-minute sessions, one for serverless, one for cloud events. Um, the, uh, I have not uploaded or, or created a Google Docs to sort of start brainstorming on the specific topics and who's gonna be saying what and who's gonna be talking and stuff like that yet. I am planning on putting that up this week so that we can start uh, gathering our ideas for what we want to talk about there, even though we have a you know sort of a rough outline already. But that will then allow us to then you know get people to sign up to actually do the talking. So look for that uh, later this week. All right, before we jump into PRs and stuff, any other topics people want to bring up? All right, let's jump into it. So this one was from Tim, and unfortunately I do not see him on the call. Let's see here, get this out of the way. All right, he took an action item to modify the definition of a string to limit it, or to get a better definition for what it means to be, uh, to have the printable character set. And this is basically what it came up with. I'll give you guys a second to read this in case you haven't had a chance to read it yet.
All right. Any questions or comments on this? Does it seem like it's headed in the right direction? It looks good to me. It looked good to me when it looked at last. Okay, cool. Thank you, Clemens. Anybody else have any comments on this one? Any concerns? Okay. Any objection to adopting this then? Easy. Cool. Okay. Thank you, guys. Oops. One more second. All right. <clears throat> Evans PR. Okay. Do, 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 do one sec. Let me first hide the comments. Um, let's see. Okay. So I don't think Evans is on the call. No, he's not. Scott, do you, do you want to talk to this one or have you not followed this one? Did you want me to try to explain what's going on here? Uh, yeah, I think this is basically just trying to use the same technique we're using with uh, content type for binary encoding for HTTP for the payload for the data content encoding. So content encoding is already a, a valid HTTP header. We're we're trying to redefine what that term is, but for binary uh, mappings, we should just use the normal HTTP header. Right. Um, let's just see. So there's this change here, which basically says the two attributes, the HTTP version versus the Cloud Events version map back and forth between each other. And then this section down here, but this is in HTTP header values. So this is in the HTTP spec. He also talks about percent encoding HTTP headers. I'll give you guys a second to read that. And then, he talks about decoding there. This section here. I think that's basically it. Any comments from the crowd on this stuff? Nothing at all? I, I actually wonder whether this is accurate. Um, yes, that is right. Well, I know that they, that they, that there is a correlation between the two. However, if, yeah, if, that is exactly that is exactly what it is. So there's a I'm I'm in parallel uh, uh, responding to the other issue that's open mm -hmm. with data transfer encoding and and that's a misunderstanding because there's a content encode. So what we map to is and this is what the spec literally says. We're mapping to RFC seventy two thirty one. We're just mapping to we're mapping a cloud event to an HTTP message. We don't do anything else. Um, data transfer encoding is um, RFC 7230, which is about how HTTP functions. And that, and there, uh, the data transfer encoding is about whether you compress the content. That is completely orthogonal to this. So data transfer encoding, so content transfer encoding is in, in it, so with, with what we do here, we're mapping to uh, both HTTP 2 and we will map to HTTP 3 and we map, map to HTTP 1, 1 because we only really focus on mapping to the message. The transfer stuff is all specific to RFC 7230 is all specific to HTTP 1, 1 and looks different in, um, in HTTP 2 and HTTP 3. So, so this I, is the right mapping. So I, I, I think I was looking at things from a slightly different perspective. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I, I probably am. But um, if data content encoding for the structured format of stuff is base 64, because yep. it's, it's binary data and you can't put binary data into an adjacent string, right? Um, when you then convert that into the binary format yep. for cloud events, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but wouldn't you just put the raw binary data into the HTTP body, so therefore you wouldn't need content encoding? Um, yes, but you might. So 
with content encoding, so content encoding exists specifically in HTTP, so you can do base64. But you need to know how to decode it, Doug, like on the other side. No, no, I get that. And I'm not, I'm not questioning that there may be times when you have it. What I'm, wondering, what I'm saying is you may not, just because you have a data content encoding value for the structured does not necessarily mean that you have to have one for the binary format is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but that's the, the, that, that is what that field is for. In, in, um, in HTTP, they have that field. Right, okay, let, let, let me. Valid values is uh, blank and not there or base64. Yes. Right, but I, okay, let, let, me, let me phrase what I'm thinking differently because I'm, I'm not getting the words out yeah. right. What I'm saying is between binary and structured formats, you may not necessarily have the same value for data content encoding. Is that true? So, so what you can do with so what you can do with content encoding is we we're actually leaving that open to the spec. We say well, you must support base sixty four, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also possible that you that you in that express other values that you use as extensions. So, for instance, in um, uh, in, in RFC 7231, you can also, for the content encoding, use gzip. I, I'm, I'm not sure that's related to what I'm thinking, though. But, but that's what this field is for. No, no, so, no. Wait, but, but do you agree that, that you may need data content encoding for the structured uh, cloud event no, no, right? but you may you may also use need it for binary. No, I, I understand you may, but just because you need it for structured does not necessarily guarantee that you need it for binary. No, it yes, but this mapping is correct. Right, and I, what I guess what I'm wondering is whether we need additional sentence here that says just because you need this for the JSON serialization does not necessarily mean you have to then. Base sixty four encode all HTTP messages in particular in the binary format. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So so if if this sentence leads you down that path, then we sh then we might go and amend it. Okay. That's that's what I was worried about. Was just because you have it in one format doesn't mean yes, I have to have it in the other because the other yeah, format yeah, may okay. not need to be so encoded. Okay. So that's okay. Great. So okay, because I, because it's it's a legitimate so it's legitimate to use the this field to to basically express how you've encoded the binary, the, the binary beyond just stuff, stuffing raw bytes in there. Right, totally so, understand. So it's okay, so even though, even though the other side may not necessarily understand what you want to express, because you know, that's, extensibility is great, and we may want to go and use that for extensibility in the future, um, uh, it's okay to say gzip. We have not specified that yet, People should not, should not get worked up, worked up about it, but that's where you would place. That's what where you would place agreements about compression. Right now, we've been we've been using Base sixty four as the one thing we think is necessary, but um, compression, all those things would would go here. Yep, understood. Okay, what you do is what you do to the binary. Yep. Okay, so I'll tell you what, on that particular point, I'll, follow, I'll do a follow-on PR because I think this might be interesting text for the primer, not necessarily the spec. Yes. But I'll do a follow-on thing about that. Okay. Um, I think these are all data drawers. So what about this section here for, uh, for percent encoding HTTP headers? You guys okay with that? I'm wondering, do, do we actually need this though, since we just accepted Tim's PR? Um, what did Tim? You, you can't put UTF-8 in headers. Yeah, yes, that's right. Mm. Um, well, <laughs> it, you can't and you can. <laughs> so by the, so this is, this is, I think this is where we had the, um, So you can't put H you can't UTF-8 in the headers. It's correct. You can't actually put anything but seven-bit ASCII in headers. Um, but contemporary implementations let you. So and you know and people put strings in there 
and they don't think about the rule very hard and they stuff a UTF-8 stuff in there and then they pull it out as UTF-8 and it kind of works even though it doesn't work at the standards level. Um, so that's, I, th I think that's mostly what the reality of that, of that often is, is that it kind of works and it doesn't. So here I'm okay with introducing, I'm kind of okay with introducing that rule. <sighs> I'm not sure. I'm not going to put opposition up. Let's put but it this way. Do people need more time to think about this? Well, the, the rule is pretty clear in HTTP, and that is you can't have anything but 7-bit ASCII, which means we'll have to have some kind of encoding, and percent encoding is the closest thing. But then, then the question is, you know, does that actually catch the um, – um, does that actually catch um, the, the Unicode set? Like, so how do you, how do you encode a, can you encode a Unicode character with that, a UTF-8 character, character with that? Is that clear here? You would do it with like a slash U, right? Like, like what Tim is saying? Yeah. And I think that's, so, so I think, I think Tim has, has this. So I wonder whether we need this here, here too, because Tim has, has, I think Tim, Tim, Tim has that. Although I don't, I don't see slashes in this. Yeah, exactly. This is, I think those two things are, are not aligned. This one and Tim's one. So, Okay, it sounds like then we may not necessarily be ready to adopt this one if they're not yeah. aligned. Um, could you, Clemens, add a comment to explain how they're not aligned and in, into the PR itself? Yes. So that, since Evans is, um, I don't think he's on the call. Yeah, Evans is not on the call. So hold on a sec. The Italic pipe is throwing me off. Say that again? <laughs> Uh, one of the valid characters is a pipe, but it's italicized, so it kind of looks like a forward slash. Oh. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see if there's anything big on here. What about the decoding side of things, which is the next paragraph? Does that need al alignment as well, with Clemens? Uh, well, th th that's th if you if you if you must if the rule is that you must percent encode, then of course you have to go and do percent decoding. Yeah, no, I got that. I was just wondering whether there's additional text needed there based upon Tim's PR or whether that is a. Um, yeah, we need, to, we need, I, I need to go and take a look at that in, in context. Okay. Anybody else have any comments or questions on this? Yeah, what was already said. And I'm, and I'm sorry that I, that I didn't catch that in earlier. No, that's okay. Okay. In that case, we'll have to delay this one until next week to continue on. I actually think that's it in terms of open PRs for version one. So that's good. We only have one right now. However, we do have a couple of issues that I wanted to get people's opinions on. Um, Cause I thought if they actually re required change to the spec, they needed to be in there before 1.0. So there's this one. I'll let you guys read it. Uh, there's, so there's the title in the first section. Basically it wants to extend the data content encoding to have a list of transformations instead of just a single transformation. Is that supported by HTTP natively? You know, I, I, I actually looked at the spec this morning and I could not figure that out. Mm. Um, Let me see. Because I, I, it, I didn't, when I looked at the schema for the header, it didn't show a list there, but I know in general, you can have the same HTTP header appear more than once, but I couldn't find any text that said 
the second one overrides the first or whether it appends it to some sort of list. I, I, mean, I was only skimming over very, very quickly. Yeah, would, you, would you happen to know? Um, there's a rule. That says. <laughs> if one or more, so HTTP says, yeah. because I just have that right here. Mm -hmm. If one or more encodings have been applied to, the, to a representation, um, so that's payloads, that's the HTTP lingo for payload. The sender that applied the encoding must generate a content encoding header field that lists the content encodings in the order in which they were applied. Hmm. So it does support a list. Yes, it does support a list. Is it this format right here that, that he expresses in this one? Uh, yes, it is. So, I mean, we, I think in the spec, we literally refer to the HTTP spec at least at one point. It did. Um, can we go and take a yeah. look? Hold on. Yeah, because we do refer to some section. Hold on. Hmm. I, certainly, when I string per. See, what threw me off was when I looked at this section right here. It didn't imply the mechanism was a list. It implied it was a singleton. Oh God, that's actually, a, that's a mistake. That's in, not, wait, in HTTP that, spec or in ours? This, this, this link is wrong. Oh. Uh, can you go back? Do, 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 do. I wonder why I did that. Because that's that's that wasn't that wasn't that was wasn't meant to be that RFC. I think I I think this is my I think I wrote that. The cat is complaining too. The cat knows all. Five minutes to bells. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Five minutes to bells. You already know it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. This is the wrong. This is the wrong RFC for HTTP is now seventy two thirty one. Seventy two thirty one. Yes, that's the that's the message card. The message. Um, that's what we want. Um, so and this is so. So that's my. That's actually my mistake. And now I understand why the confusing confusing confusion exists in this uh, in the PR 477 so that's that's the feel I actually mean to I mean to bind to well but even this one has this yeah I know which doesn't apply a list to me um, no 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 you look look at that sentence if, if one or more encodings have been applied blah 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 right. So if one or more encodings have been applied to a representation, the sender must generate a content encoding header field that lists the content codings in the order in which they were applied. Oh, okay. So that has a list. So basically you're saying if we change the reference to this section here, we may be okay? Um, let me... There's, so we, we, we have a mix of what HTTP does. And what SMTP does, they have. So for the case that we have binary, this is, the, this is now getting a little weird. I may have some, I may need some more time to think about the details. So in the case where we have binary, I want to be able to do exactly what's set here, that, which means I want to be able to declare this is gzipped and go and, and use gzip. Uh -huh. Now, if you go and look at 7230, uh -huh. and search for what? So this is the... So 7230 is, is, the, um, is effectively the transport, the transport thing. 
that has a transport content transfer encoding. I'm trying to figure out where the thing's defined. I only see two references in it here. Neither one actually defines it. Uh, oh, that's a transfer encoding. No. Okay, hang on. This is me thinking out loud while you're all listening. That's not good. It's always scary. <laughs> <laughs> this, which, which also, which also destroys the myth that I know all the RFCs out of, out of, out of the top of my head. Uh, um, hang on. I, so that is actually an eighty-nine. That is in here. So this well, is. You want to take this offline? Do you want to take it offline instead? Uh, you see, while we're while we're a small group and we still have half an hour. <laughs> sure, go for it. Uh. Ah, okay, great. So, HTTP does not use the content transfer encoding field of MIME. So, the thing that we refer to, this here, right, is is not in H in 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 HTTP, but there is a transfer encoding field, and the transfer encoding field in in thirty two in seven. Okay, now now I'm okay. Now I'm back on. But now I'm back on track. So sorry for the confusion. So this field. This meaning which. Okay, so this field is, we're using this field in the meaning of, of MIME, which is, um, this is text, this might be, this might be seven bit ASCII, and we need to go and tell you um, how specifically we're encoding something that's not seven bit ASCII. And, and we're using this specifically if we want to stuff um, 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 binaries and strings. That mm -hmm. means that correctly, um, the mapping, the sentence that we have in the spec is indeed incorrect, in the HTTP spec is indeed incorrect, because that should not map. Meaning this, this link here is wrong? Uh, no, no, this link is correct. Okay. Because that's what we, me we mean, we, so, so SMTP, where this comes from, right, has, can only do text. And you have to trick it into carrying um, and you know, old versions of well, it can only do text. And so you have to trick it into, into carrying something that is more than seven bit ASCII. So you're effectively telling it, hey, look at this, look at this encoding field. This is what you find in here. In here. There's no seven bit ASCII. This is actually something else. That's what this, this is what this is used for. And that's also um, what we're using that for. So we're basically borrowing from the MIME spec this notion of encoding. And uh, base sixty four, the and we're explicitly referring to it because base sixty four that encoding is normatively normatively defined over in that section. That's where base sixty four literally comes from. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So base sixty four base sixty four is nowhere but here, and this is why we why we refer to that spec. Now, the 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 transfer. Um, the content encoding of HTTP is a different thing for which we don't have a field for yet. The, so this is, so our tr data content encoding is specifically only for, this, for the case where we put data into stru in structured mode into um, a um, data where we, where we put the string into data but the string really is supposed to be a binary. Are you like basically a, saying? Are you basically saying that this should technically be called data content transfer encoding? No, 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 no. This is the, um, we call this. Well, we can call this data content transfer encoding if we want to align with RFC twenty twenty forty five. Yes. Well, because well, the reason I say that is because 
This implies to some people the HCV header content encoding, which is a list. And your yes. base, and I think what you're saying is, no, 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 we don't want a list. This is strictly only for the binary case, and we're yeah. stealing data transfer encoding or content transfer encoding, and therefore, to avoid any possible confusion, yeah. if you put yeah. the word transfer in here, you avoid that. Yes, that's right. So that's that, that, that's correct. And then and then you also we also have clarity that because HTTP explicitly says no, we're not using that field. And then we can remove that mapping. Remove that. So the mapping that you showed earlier um, uh, in our HTTP binding. Are you talking about the other the other? Are you actually, you talking about this stuff? No way. Yeah. Uh, Was it SPR? Yeah. No, uh, in that. I think uh, we've I think we found that there just now. Uh, actually, this it actually might be very closely related to Fabio's question. Should data content encoding map to transfer, or actually, yeah. I guess this is related to that. Yeah. Yeah, and because <laughs> that's the funny thing. So can, data data <laughs> that field that he says we should map to it does not exist in HTTP. <laughs> So, but, let me ask a completely different question. Should we, try, should we stop trying to reuse words from other specs in this particular field? And in particular, turn this into more of a, more of a Boolean and say, are you using base 64 or not? Um, or, do you want to, or do you want to allow for other types besides base 64? Uh, in this day and age, I'm not sure there's a, someone is going to, you, you know that next year someone is going to come up with the, you know, emoji encoding, which is a magic way to go and encode binary in, um, in UTF-8 in a super compact way and then we are missing out on it. I have it. It's called Face64. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, what what if we okay? What if instead of a boolean, we still allowed a single value in there, but but use a different word or phrase other than content encoding, since it it's going to apply something we don't mean to apply. Yeah, I think I think that's probably that's that's um, yeah, that makes sense because that eliminate that eliminates the confusion. I mean, we could just drop it to data encoding. And I think that's we went through some we went through some uh, um, discussions. So Alan came up with Alan Conway came up with that field. Um, yeah, I think data encoding is good. So let me, let me back up just a sec, at least from my own understanding is is the text in this part of the spec that I've highlighted here is all this text correct? And it strictly boils down to the name here is misleading people. Um, almost, yes. Yeah. So I would. So what I would do is I would do two things. I would strike content. Strike um, content. And oh, the word content. I would, yeah, I, would, I would rename this to data to data encoding. And I would I would drop the first reference. You mean this? So the, the, the this reference exactly. Okay. Um, I would, but I would leave the base 64 encoding as defined in, I would leave that. Um, Why would you drop this reference just out of curiosity? Uh, because we only, we want to constrain it to base 64, do we? Well, I thought we wanted to support face 64. Yeah, but we need to go and, and point to be able to point to base 64 and that was the that that's the that's the reason why I would still point to that RFC. Well, okay, so we do point to it here, right? Yes. So okay, so you okay, so you want to be able to say it can be any string, not just twenty. Yeah, it can be any string, but if it's space before, then it's space before as defined here. Got it. Okay, so we think I think we're talking about dropping the word content. Mm -hmm. dropping this section to loosen it to make it even broader set of strings, but keep the reference to defining base 64. So we have a little yeah. bit of interoperability. Yeah. And I suppose 
drop this. Go at least yes. drop the reference. And, and then and then and then we still need to um, uh, string. We still need to have a have a sentence that says you know that base sixty four is the string that is like this is not clear yet. If this attribute is supported, the base sixty four encode. Oh no, maybe must be supported. Yeah, I think that's a, that's the, I think that's sufficient. Okay, so let's pause there for a second and get opinions from other people in the group. Let's let me pick on Scott first since you've been speaking up a little bit about this. What do you think, Scott? It's getting complicated. <laughs> well, I think the conversation got complicated. I'm not sure the, the net result is necessarily complicated, is it? I mean, do you, do you think read the rename will, will will clarify things or make it more complicated? I I liked the PR that Evan sent, but I don't. I don't have as much detailed knowledge of all the RFCs as uh, Clements does. Well, I don't think it's necessarily changes uh, Evans PR. This is something different. This is do we? This is a question about whether this is meant to map to HTTP content transfer encoding, yeah, or or HTTP content encoding, you know, or any or neither. Yeah. It Maps to neither. So we we were actually discussing discussing in a separate issue now. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Sorry, actually, we're, if anything, we're actually discussing this one right here. Oh no. Yeah. Well, the, this one in combination with this one. Nah. I, yes. I think it gets tricky because we we might be talking about the RFC for transfer encoding if it's HTTP binary, but we're not we're not necessarily talking about that as as part of the spec, but part of the binding. Mm. So like in, in structured mode, data content encoding does not mean that, and it shouldn't be mapped to the header because right. we're gonna have a string inside the JSON payload that is base 64 encoded. Yeah. And when that thing gets converted to a binary HTTP uh, request, we should pop the quotes off the, the JSON base 64 string, use content encoding and then provide it. But the, the thing is like you you might lose the intent of the original sender if they want the data the data sent as base 64 encoded. In the next conversion we don't we don't necessarily know that the original request was supposed to be base 64 encoded. So yeah. next conversion to structured might be something completely different. And you're right. And and for that exact and for that exact reason we need to we need to remove the mapping because h so we and we need to we need to disambiguate the field and we need to remove the mapping because what we're doing is we're we're allowing a cloud event to go through http where we leave the choice that you if you want to right you can still have a base 64 body and then this field says um, well this is a base 64 thing you should go and interpret that as binary or you leave that off completely, this field, and then you encode it as binary. So we're effectively now giving you both choices also for, for um, HTTP. But um, that means because that, this base 64 encoding thing is, is not a concept that HTTP supports in its uh, content encoding field, which exists, but that's really just for GZIP. We're now having we're now we now set ourselves up with a with a collision just by choosing that name. So if we just call this data encoding, then it gets and we don't map it to HTTP, then it becomes in HTTP it becomes CE dash, you know, data encoding and get, goes from from one side to the next, and then there's clarity that this is really a, a cloud events concept. Yeah, that sounds good, and that that prevents us from needing to try to understand if the content encoding gets of gzip propagates because the transports chose some optimization. Yeah, exactly. So in for so for that hop over gzip, it's perfectly fine to use the content encoding gzip, but that if it doesn't affect the cloud event at all. Because it will pop out out of the gzip 
transfer and just look normal. I also like the dropping content from data content encoding. Right. <laughs> so. So that's a slightly different question. Make sure I'm completely following all this. Data, the, if we rename this to be data encoding, mm -hmm. am I correct in that we do not need to make it a list? It can be a singleton. That is correct. Okay. Okay. So anybody else on the call? I, I, I'm tempted to pick on somebody, but I'm a little afraid to. Anybody else want to speak up on this one? Is anybody else listening? <laughs> Tell you what, let me pick on somebody just because I want to get them on the attendance list. Klaus, uh, are you, were you following knew, this one? <laughs> you were mentioning the attendance list, I knew you would pick me. That's right. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it was really hard to follow all the discussion, I have to admit. Um, I think, well, and of course, it's painful to think of another field renaming. But still, I think it seems to make sense from what I understood. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Is there anybody else want to volunteer? I won't pick on anybody else yet. Anybody else want to volunteer to have voice an opinion on this? Okay, not hearing anybody. I'm going to assume then that this general direction sounds right. And Clemens, can I ask you to take the action item to to produce a PR that sort of resolves all this in one lump sum? Uh, yeah. Of course, yes. Of course. <laughs> I like that, of course. Okay, so hold on a minute. Uh, which one are we talking about? Okay. Okay, so let's see what we talked about here. So we do data content encoding to just data encoding. Mm -hmm. uh, just drop ref to uh, go away. Darn it, the Zoom thing. Well, the, there's no way to pick the Zoom pop up. Like, hold on. Not, um, nope. Okay, so drop that. There's mm -hmm. two of them. And there was something else you were going to do. Um, uh, remove the mapping in HTTP. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Anything else? Uh, it's to the one right below, Fabio's. Okay. Anything else? Okay. <clears throat> In that case, since we're talking about uh, this section here, hold on. Um, why do I have that one there twice? I shouldn't be there. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else on that topic related to data content encoding? Okay. Let's see if we can move on to Evan's PR about tricky cases. Now keep in mind, this is all non-normative stuff, but we do need to make sure it's right since these are guiding examples. Come on. There we go. So we're back to Clemens, I'm not Clemens, uh, Evan's PR. Did people get a chance to look at this one? I think he made some very, very minor typographical fixes last night. I don't think he made any semantic changes. Um, actually, Evan, uh, not Evan, Clemens, question for you here. Will your PR that you're writing up, I assume it's gonna modify this, not just the type, or actually, is it just gonna be um, yeah, it's good. a name it's change good. and that's it? Yeah. And it, so he would still say, so in binary format, you still would expect to see base 64. Uh, no, um, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. If, if that, yes, if that's, if that's what he wants, yes. Okay, yeah, that's the key phrase. If that's what he wants, yes. yes. But it is completely optional. If, if, it said, if it says that, then the expectation is that the content of the, the entity body is um, a, a base 64 string. Actually, hold on a minute. Actually, I'm sorry. Well, it's, Would, it's a base 64 encoded of the whatever the content type is. 
Yes, exactly. But and if this doesn't make sense, well, then you know. But then, would this but would would this be the HTTP? Would, would it be a CE dash or would it be an HTTP header? No, it would be it would be CE dash. It's a this is a, now that we now that we made it a data encoding thing. It would be it's a, it's purely a CE metadata. It has no longer anything to do with HTTP. Okay. Actually, I take it back, Clemens. If, if that's true, uh, I think a lot of parsers will have a problem if you send in just the a non quoted base sixty four encoded JSON string as the body, but content type is application JSON. I think it's going to have a bad day. I would think so too. Then we. That's why I'm kind of wondering whether data content encoding only shows up in the structured format. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, it should actually. That's right. Yeah, we're not only do we do we map we remove the mapping, we actually disallow it. Okay, so I, I think more thinking might be needed on this one. So. Remove mapping HP. Uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. And hold on. What's the four seven seven? I'll have I'll have I'll have something for that soon. Okay. Thank you. Not today, but tomorrow. Hold on. Yeah. Four seventy seven. Okay. Yeah. So I think this one PR is going to cover a whole bunch of different cases all in one. Yeah. yeah should be good. Okay. Um. Uh. I, I thought there was one other one I wanted to talk about. I think Christoph is looking at this one, so I don't think we can discuss it. I think that's it, aside from possibly the webhook spec, which I think is an AI for me to deal with, not anybody else yet. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for the agenda. Are there other, I'm sorry, Clemens, were you going to say something? Yeah, the webhook spec thing, I, it's like, I don't know what, I, I don't understand what the motivation is for that, for moving it from the set, because we're apparently all doing. HTTP post deliveries of HTTP, but and, uh, yeah. but, I have a uh, support for long it, polling. Huh? You can long pull a target and get cloud events out of it. No, oh, of course, no. It's not. This is not the only way. This is why the web spec is a separate one, right? The web spec is one way we can do these things, and this is what. So, so the HTTP spec and the web spec are separate, specifically because I wanted to make sure that. Um, the you can just map the the a cloud event onto an HTTP message, um, and independent of the direction, right? The, the HTTP messages are the same for requests and responses, um, other than the status line versus the request line, and um, that some headers are allowed and not allowed, but the rest is all the same. So that's what the HTTP binding does. And then for pushing stuff out. That's what the webhook spec covers, and we don't have anything for solicitation of events. That's right, um, but that's something we could go and we could go and add. But but for delivering events via push, the reason why this webhook spec exists is because there is no such common spec, and that's why some of the webhook people, um, like from GitHub and elsewhere, showed up and said, "Hey, it's great that you have that that you created a spec like this." Um, which is, you can go and take a look at the, uh, the PR for it. Now, um, I, have, I have talked to some of the folks inside of Microsoft because of this, this issue um, on whether we could go and, and find a home for that, maybe elsewhere. And there, people have been thinking about what the venues are. The biggest issue and that might be that um, if we wanted to go and you take the spec and then move it into a, a more appropriate place, maybe W3C, um, or IETF, then there remains the issue that this is now owned by CNCF and we can't just you know, move it. Yeah, I think that's where my initial thought process was on opening up this issue at all was, is this the appropriate home for it? Because I, I do see value in the spec, there's no question about that. It's just yeah. whether the definition of this is out of scope for us. So there's a, so there's a, there's a spec project apparently that I learned about inside of, inside of the Linux Foundation uh, which is you know all the grand the grand umbrella, which is specifically existing for th things of that sort, mm -hmm. um, but I have not 
um, done, I've done a follow up on the investigation to see whether we can go and, and move it to a different place. Ultimately, it's just a question of, of whether it should be homed um, so that it gets more audience. But we're doing eventing here, and that's kind of the, the primary use case for a spec like this. So that's why, even though it doesn't have a clear tie into the payload, um, that's why it makes sense to, ha to have here. If we remove it, then there's a, all the things that are in that spec are all about, you know, creating a profile of, of HTTP that helps interop. Mm -hmm. If we remove it, then all those constraints for interop are gone and um, we're still having the issue of like, how do, how do you do auth and how do you do abuse prevention? Like all the things that are specifically addressed here um, are then again, left up, uh, uh, left to, uh, um, you know, speculation and mutual agreements. And that's what I wanted to avoid with this. Right. So anyway, I, I think the net of this is, I think between the two of us, Clemens, we have an AI to figure out what we want to do, whether we want to propose to yeah. keep it here or propose to move it and we can take that offline. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Um, okay. Any other topics for the agenda since we're almost out of time? Okay, in that case, let's just finish up the um, agenda stuff. Um, Doug, are you, are you still there? Doug M. Mark's on. Yep, we got you, Mark. Doug, you still there? Are you coming off mute? I'll come back to him in a sec. Uh, Christian. Christian. Double muted. Hi. Okay, I got Christian. Was that Doug in there? Yes, here. As I thought, cool. And Dan Barker? Yeah, I'm here, Doug. Excellent, cool. Sorry. Did I miss anybody? Okay, gotcha, Dan. Did I miss anybody for the attendance? All right, cool. Uh, just since we have a second here, uh, Kyle, are you still on? Yeah, you are. Kyle. Um, if you hope you don't mind, and you feel free to, to say you can't comment if you can't comment, but are you guys actually using cloud events or are you still just so, sort of investigating it? Just investigating it. Um, we're, we're trying to move to a more evented re reactive architecture and this was suggested to check out. Okay. The reason I'm asking is because I, I get the sense that your company would fall into the category of an end user company. And we're looking for end users to say, yes, we, we use cloud events. So if, if at some point you, you feel like you can say that without lying, please let me know so we can add your company to the name to, to the list, assuming you're okay with having your name in there. Will do. Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Anybody else on the call for the, for the attendee list? I think I got everybody. All right. In that case, I believe we're done. Thank you guys. I'm a little bit early today. We'll talk again next week. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Doug. Bye.